Hey folks, this is Georgie here from The Art of the Hookup, your straightforward guide to a successful sex life. I'm getting back on the video today to talk about sexting. And by that, I mean sending sexy pictures, um, dirty talk online, getting on the video chat. I think this is something that a lot of us have been thinking about lately, now that we can't see our partners at our dates in person. So if you've been considering this stuff, you might also need to know that there are a lot of security and privacy concerns that go along with it. Um, I've been doing this for a number of years, but I've never really thought too hard about the actual like privacy concerns. And it's probably time that I, uh, I learned a bit more about that. So um, today I'll be chatting with a really amazing guy. His name is Steve Kent. He's from the US and he's an incredible um, tech and security expert who's agreed to have a chat with me about the basics of safety around sexting and getting sexy online. I really hope you find this useful. I'll make sure that I've got uh, my settings, yes. Can you hear me all right? I can, that's perfect. And I've remembered to unmute myself. So I'm today. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a, a chronic um, pandemic of people forgetting to unmute themselves on Zoom calls. Oh, I see. Right. <laughs> yes, we, I experienced that yesterday on a call with about 13 people, so. <laughs> in, in terms of fails, it's not the worst, but it's not the best. Thank you so much for speaking. It's really nice to meet you, Steve. Oh, it's good to meet you. How are you doing? Yeah, uh, look, you know, I haven't really um, been out of my apartment in four weeks. I stuck <laughs> ahead of the curve, so I'm a bit, a bit nuts, but nothing, nothing new, right? And yourself, how are you going over there? It's okay. I today was the first day I walked outside of my house in about a week. <laughs> so, it's amazing to actually get a bit of air and see the sun, and you get this big rush. Yes, it's still cold here. It's still about um, forty Fahrenheit. So what is that? Twenty something C or no, ten something C. <laughs> ten degrees. Yep, that's about standard <laughs> Melbourne weather, actually. Oh, is it? I yeah, we get it was there. <laughs> we're down, we're down south, so we get a bit colder. So we're uh, probably we're probably about the same. Yeah. So look, um, I've been stalking you online, so I know a little bit about your background, and it's pretty awesome. But I was wondering whether you could tell us a bit about yourself, so that people who are watching um know know that you know what the hell you're talking about, because I sure know you do. Sure. So. I'm Stephen Kent. I am currently the Chief Technology Officer for Onshore Security in Chicago in America. Uh, we have been a network security company for about 20 years. I started working in internet network design and security design around 1998. So we specialize in uh, network attack uh, detection and response, as well as information security awareness and consulting. Oh, great. So, I mean, you've had the chance to watch this whole internet thing develop from what it used to be into what it is now, which is oh, yeah. a really complicated beast. Yes, very much. <laughs> This will be an interesting conversation because like a lot of my friends have started engaging with um, this stuff a lot more because we all have to, right? Because we're all stuck at home. Um, and a lot of them have talked about wanting to start to sex with their partners that they can't see or meet people online. But I don't think, I think most of us um, regular folk just don't, don't really have much an idea around internet security and privacy. Um, and I'd really love to have a chat too about that because it sounds like you're probably pretty across it. I'm, I'm aware of most of the general issues. As I said, we specialize mostly in information detection and response, threat detection and response. But you, being in this industry so long, you hit all the major areas a lot. And privacy is always a big concern, particularly whether you're dealing with your own personal privacy or you're dealing with organizations that keep healthcare records or financial data or things like that different data, similar issues, right? Right. Yeah, and I kind of feel like often um, sexting gets treated like this special case, like we keep our other data safe, 
But if you sex someone and you end up on a porn site, it's it's all your own fault. But I kind of <laughs> I kind of feel like maybe we can't have that attitude anymore. Maybe this is the new normal now that we're going to start. Um, you know, people are going to be sexting because this is just what we need to do to um, to keep connecting. I, like, I, yeah, I don't know. I I'm a believer that the further you look, anytime there's a technological change you'll see a change in sex or sexual behavior or sexual. If we look back to, you know, um, since the first sexual toys were carved from ivory and bone, <laughs> the first tools were made to, you know, the industrial revolution and the invention of vibrators or, you know, um, what is it at one point I believe the bicycle was considered a sexual delight <laughs> for women. <laughs> I'm sure it is and for some people. Were, women were warned not to bicycle because it would <laughs> you know, give them immoral thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> wow, in terms of things that give me immoral thoughts, bicycles are not top of the list, but I'll, I'll save that one for later. <laughs> it's true, though, that, um, that sex and porn in particular tends to always be at the forefront of technology, right? We're always pushing the envelope. Um, yeah. Well, it's, it's, you know, sex is part of who we are as human beings. And I guess my feeling is if, if you are going to be doing sexual acts online or sexting, however you want to encompass that broadness, um, whether you're doing sexual performance or you're sexting with a partner or sexting, sexting with a stranger, um, there's always some, in, in giving your information to someone else, there's always a risk associated. You have to kind of say, and this is true in any sexual encounter, which is right. why we take precaution, precaution, precautionary <laughs> measures, or, you know, we, we take care of our own health to take care of ourselves and our partners. But there's always risk, right? And there's always right. risk with online interaction. So there's no way we can make this 100% safe and guarantee that you're never going to have your data stolen or your images stolen or your privacy invaded. Right. You can reduce some of that risk and you can reduce your own risk levels. The question is, where, where do you consider the threat? Is the threat from the person you're... Uh, trading information with, if I'm sending you pictures, or I'm sending you stories, or I'm sending, or we're chatting back and forth, is, is do you consider the risk your potential partner, or the person you're chatting with, or is the risk the service provider, or is the risk, you know, some other entity? Or is it you? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I know I've lost a few phones in my time and I didn't have a passcode on them. And there were a lot of naked oh. photos on those devices. And I think we, <laughs> we always assume the other person is the weakest link, that they're going to take our images and use them for revenge porn or something. But I think maybe, would you say that often our own security of our devices and our systems would be a thing we'd have to think about? Well, we always need to be, this is true, I don't, I, I understand what we do is there's a trade-off in general between convenience and security. And a lot of people will always opt for convenience and not put of a screen pass code on their phone or preferably a, like a boot up pass code or an initialization pass code, yeah. which you really want to have both. And there are reasons you want to have both because let, let's say you have a, a malicious partner. And this is, this is something that's been coming up a lot lately. Mm. Um, an ex or someone you're in an um, unhealthy relationship with. And it's become common for those kinds of people to install different kinds of stalkerware on their partner's phones. And if you put in some kind of a boot pass code, so if they happen to reboot the phone, they're forced to, to enter some secret that allows it to boot up and access, that's a deterrent. Now, of course, there's always a chance of passcodes being stolen and things like that, but you just have to build that deterrence. It's doing what we can. So would that be your first recommendation to the newbie sexter? Have a have a password, a boot password? Oh, have, have strong passwords or, and, and this is just kind of a general security recommendation, 
avoid pins and passwords. So what you, the best thing to do is to come up with a passphrase. So there are all kinds of ways to make up passphrases. If you, if you just think of a phrase and remember it yourself, if you, if you come up with the phrase of, you know, I like ice cream, all lowercase with a capital I at the beginning, that's, that's now your passphrase. That becomes very difficult for someone to guess. It's, it's significantly complex enough that it's hard to, for, to, to attack through a dictionary attack, mm -hmm. you know. So make it as long as you can, just a passphrase you remember. You don't need spaces, you don't need anything else, just a simple passphrase. Great place to start, have a good password. Absolutely. And then say you've got someone who's secured their device and they've met someone, say on online dating, if we've gotten on Tinder and matched with someone and we've decided we want to get a bit sexy, um, you know, like what, what would be your first consideration to them? What would be the first thing you'd say to them about protecting their privacy and also protecting the stuff that they're sharing? So there are, this is my, this is from my experience. I mean, I don't sex a lot, but I'm part of several sexual communities online. There are kind of three cases we deal with, you know, your sexting or, or trading information with someone anonymously. You're, you're doing it with somebody you recently met whose identity you may know, or you're doing it with a known partner. And I think each of those things carries different risks. And it would depend upon your particular scenario. If I'm chatting with my partner and we want to exchange pictures, I would look for an application that utilizes full end to end encryption. That's usually something like um, the Signal messaging app. Signal, yeah. But the, 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 the problem with the Signal messaging app is, is that it is, of course, tied to a phone number. So that becomes a piece of data. Whereas if you're texting with someone anonymously, you don't necessarily want them to be able to track it back to you. And this is relevant because I've spoken to people this week who have been stalked by people that they met online. And it's amazing the amount of personal information you can find out about someone if you just have access to their email address or phone number that they use often. Absolutely. And particularly, Recently, phone numbers have become a very valuable commodity in the sale of personal information because so many people tie bank accounts and passwords and things to their phone numbers that, you know, it, it becomes very simple then to acquire someone's phone number, get access to their bank account, their email, whatever, any other digital footprints or information they may have. Do you think we're going to see a, uh, this is slightly unrelated, but do you think that we're going to see a rise in like phishing and hacking and things like that as people get online more during we this already sort of stuff? Have. Really? We already have. There, there, there are a number, beginning a couple of weeks ago, there was a large spike in particularly COVID-19 related phishing attacks. Scams and, and such. Um, a lot of scams uh, here in the United States where our government is beginning to issue uh, checks for um, financial relief to people. There have been a lot of phishing scams around that, attempting to get people's bank account numbers or banking credentials or social security information, personal identifying information. And this is absolutely something that could happen meeting strangers on the internet. It's like we don't want to give away our identifying information to people that we don't know at all uh, because uh, we can be giving away really valuable stuff. So that sort of um, that sort of highest risk scenario you're talking about, meeting people where we don't know where in the world they're from or who they are, um, that's going to be our tightest sort of security protocol around staying safe, right? Right. And there are a lot of applications you know, that are specifically designed things like, um, uh, you know, things like Grindr, where you may have anonymous or screen names to anonymous screen names, where people will chat, and things like that. You know, in that case, most of the risk is with the service provider itself. Grindr has been known to leak 
both locational data and healthcare data. <laughs> so sort of so, step two, sort of choosing a provider that lets you hide your personal details, like your name, for example, and phone number, but then also one that you trust not to give away that data or to leak that data. Right. Yeah. So even if we look at something, you know, if you look at something like Snapchat, which is an interesting application because what it allows you to do, uh, Signal also allows it, but Snapchat is designed to do it, is for you to be able to send images which will automatically delete. Yes, and I, I've used it. It's quite, it's pretty neat. And if you take a screenshot, then it notifies the other person. So you can't stop them from keeping the image, but at least you know if they're doing that, which is helpful. Well, there are some vulnerabilities in that. So you can't be 100% certain, but there are a lot of deterrents around it. There are ways you can hook into Snapchat on the phone itself and capture images on the back end. But somebody really has to go to a little bit of trouble to do trouble. that <laughs> so again it's like it's not making it fail safe it's just making it more difficult for someone right all, all security is ostensibly about deterrence <laughs> <laughs> if someone's super determined and really really good at this stuff you, you're kind of out of luck but most people aren't most of us are just fumbling around right. if you've got that exactly. password on your phone you know Going to go and most way. of us are not targeted by the Chinese government or the American government. <laughs> I'm not that big yet. You never know. <laughs> right. exactly. Most of us are not worth the effort. <laughs> so that, that sort of scenario, we're just trying to make things as difficult as possible and balancing that, balancing that off with the convenience and actually getting to do the stuff we want and have the sexy conversations we want, right? So right. making the right apps. Is there anything that you particularly recommend or any particular ways of interacting that you feel are right. maybe a little bit safer than others? Well, as I said, if we if you use an app, particularly an app where you can control message persistence, whether that message disappears over time. As I said, Signal does this, um, Snapchat does this. There's another app which I <laughs> which I played around with called, I think it's what is it called? Duster? Dust? Um, actually, I have it loaded on my phone. Oh, I'll grab it from you. I might post that the link later. It was designed, and I have some dust. It was actually designed specifically for this kind of chatting to be anonymous and to be time sensitive, being allowed to, to um, do things. There's not been severe code review of it yet. But mm -hmm. it looks like a very interesting app. It is sadly made by Mark Cuban, who has himself kind of an odd past. <laughs> uh, your your fave app is problematic, hashtag, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I did just discover a video, um, an online video platform where you can log in and video call someone without entering any of your personal details or creating an account. Um, I forgot yeah. the name of it because I'm really it's early in the morning, but I did find that pretty cool to be able to video chat with someone and completely hide your identity um, because you don't need an account. Yeah, there are a couple of systems like that. The Jitsi system allows Jitsi. you to do that. That's it. Uh, the Jitsi system is, <laughs> Jitsi is actually a system we, we recently deployed in our office, so I'm very familiar with it. Right. So, uh, so recommended. It's we run it internally and completely, so it's not publicly available. But it's a it's a very interesting system. It has some good security features. It's not fully end to end security, but it's transport secure. And so that's kind of like okay encryption, but not super yeah. Superman encryption. Right. The, the difference is kind of, can the message be read somewhere? Could it be decoded somewhere between the two senders? Mm -hmm. Whether it's um, in, you know, at one internet service provider, at the, at the um, server it's terminating to, or with the other internet service provider. So end to end means that it's completely encrypted from one sender's key to another sender's key versus, yeah. for instance, Zoom just got a lot of grief for not being end-to-end -end encrypted. None of us, I, 
I never believed it was. Any of us who worked in security never believed it was. In the first place. And a lot of other stuff with Zoom as well that they're now attempting to fix, like things like people dropping it on your calls and screening porn at you unexpectedly and things like yes, that. Yes, the Zoom bombing. Yeah, that's a fairly new phenomenon just because Zoom has become more popular. Popular. And it's become easier for people to kind of guess uh, Zoom, either guess or find the Zoom ID codes, the meeting numbers. Yeah. So, I mean, we're, and we're probably going to see more of this across everything because people are using it more. People are going to get more interested in hacking it or in harassing people. Uh, you know, the amount of um, unsolicited dick pics across the world probably just multiplied exponentially. So yes. but we're all going to have to start being more careful about this stuff. Um, right. this is, so I guess, uh, I guess my my main like this has been amazing thank you and we've made some good app recommendations too and i'll post the links up to those um when i mm. post this video but i guess if there was one principle or one thing that you really wish people would just consider more when they're getting online and getting into this stuff what would be the one piece of advice you'd like to leave them with mm. sorry i know it's difficult <laughs> it's that's, a, complicated a, that's topic. a difficult thing because most people use you know, look at Google and Facebook, Instagram, and those kind of applications as ubiquitous. And I guess I would remind everybody, and I would remind everybody that in those, particularly with those applications, you're the product. <laughs> so they are, they are invested in harvesting your personal data. They're invested in, if you're sexting with your boyfriend over, um, Google chat or hangouts or something, you know, Google has search engines that are reading through your messages it, and not for nefarious purposes, but to harvest data for advertising, to harvest data to build algorithms, to harvest, you know, to train their AI systems. You know, this is the same thing is true on Facebook. You know, their job is to collect as much personal data about you as they can. Yeah, so it's kind and of I being suspicious that, of that. I, I think it's important that we, people realize that, and it's not necessarily nefarious, but it's the system we live within, that if you're very concerned about your privacy, if you want to, you know, potentially keep, um, you know, for whatever reason, partners in your life hidden, or um, you don't want people necessarily, I was having a discussion with a friend earlier today who was very much trying to compartmentalize his life, who had uh, tried to have a separate uh, Facebook account mm -hmm. for his fetish life versus his non-fetish life. Super common. A lot of my friends do that too. And I, and I pointed out, that doesn't really work. <laughs> it can work a little bit, but you have to be aware that Facebook and Google, their goal is to tie that data together. And they track their your location and they track your IP. So they know right. that you have those accounts. Right. And that's the other thing, particularly if you're sexting with like a mobile device and you're particularly sexting with a mobile device with someone you don't know, turn off your location services. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. I think people, a lot of people don't realize, I know this because I'm a photographer, that whenever you take a photo and you have a location switched on, sometimes it's attached to the data that goes with the picture. And if you don't take okay. that data out, people can know exactly where you are. You know, they get your exact coordinates and that's pretty terrifying. Right. Well, all of that, in fact, there was a, a recent, I um, can't remember, there was a, a program, a Python program, somebody wrote recently that just went out onto the internet and grabbed images from i think it was facebook and pulled that what's called the exit data which is if you're a photographer you know what that is and you were able to and they were able to identify people based upon commonality of camera type geolocation um you know you you correlate this big data mass and all of a sudden you can kind of narrow down to individual people so if I take a picture of my head and put it on Facebook and take a picture of my junk and send it to a, someone on the internet, potentially if you can I put can, those two pictures together using the data attached to those. Absolutely. Oh, that's absolutely. so terrifying. 
What do we do about that? Because I need to get onto that. <laughs> that's, that's a different kind of problem. You know, that's part of the, that metadata that's stored in camera images, you know, the exit data. And there are, you know, there are some applications that will try to strip it out. There are ways you can manually strip it out. But again, you, you know, it's an issue of who are you sharing the picture of your junk with? Is it just with your partner? Are you posting it to Facebook? <laughs> are, are you posting you know? it on, you know, on Reddit? Like what's, right. what's happening? Right, if you're yeah. posting it on Reddit, then I would tell you, well, maybe you should use a different camera than the one you normally use. Or maybe you should, you know, take some uh, precautions or run it through, you know, some other kind of image filter that would overwrite that data. Oh, great. So run it through a different app or run it through a filter and resave to get rid of that yeah. stuff. Yeah, this is good stuff to know because I think most of us just don't know that this stuff is necessary or possible. Yeah. Right. Um, again, most of the technology we use, we end up, particularly the software we use online, we end up kind of being the product. There's the, the, the amount of personal data that's collected it's not necessarily for a nefarious reason. It's, it is to market to us to help people then take that data and, and you know, use it for whatever purpose they are, may want. Sometimes that's nefarious. And I would argue that Brexit is a good example of that. <laughs> yeah. But then sometimes it's just marketing, right? Right. Sometimes it's just marketing. Sometimes it's helpful marketing, mm. you know? Um, some, so, sometimes it's oddly pointless marketing. <laughs> oh, which most of it is, right? Most of it is. So this well, is kind of, you know, I mean, how many of us have, uh, you'll, you'll go and you'll do a, some search for something online and then you'll get some very strange Facebook ad now, completely unrelated to anything you've done. The you scary have, thing is when you speak it aloud to a friend and then you start getting ads for things that you had a conversation about. It's creepy as fuck. So oh, we know all this stuff yeah. goes on. <laughs> so this is all sounding super grim. Would you ever recommend to someone that mm. um, that they never do this stuff? Or do you think that the, do you think that we can balance those risks with a need to actually, um, you know, get some stuff going on online? I don't think it's grim at all. I think it's just a, a simple reality. We all we are all living our lives more publicly than we ever have. This isn't the Middle Ages where we're all stuck in a single village, you know, with 200 people right. all our lives. It's again, just being risk aware mm -hmm. and not, and not over catastrophizing things. Yeah. yeah One yeah. of the, I think, I, I guess my feeling about it is, you know, I guess and this is personally, don't be so ashamed of your sexuality that if something should be online that you feel it's destroyed your life. <laughs> this, is, this is Dan Savage's approach. He says, look, in the future, every politician will have a sex tape and it's just going to be a thing. And when someone finds your sex tape or your nude images that you texted to someone 10 years ago, you go, what's the big deal? Everyone does this stuff. In an imperfect world, that would be my perfect world. Uh, you know, right. I'll work towards that. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that it's, I wouldn't lose, I don't, I work in this industry and I don't lose sleep over that issue. <laughs> you know, there are other issues I lose sleep over, but not that one. And then maybe the, if it would, maybe if you're working in an industry or in a role where someone seeing a naked picture of you would destroy you or destroy your career, then it's time to have a bit more of a think about the risk and whether the risk is worth it. Because this stuff is realistic. Right. Or, or take extra precautions. You yeah, know, I really learn about this stuff. Apps that are end -end encrypted. Yep. Make sure that the messages delete. Make sure that you trust your partner you're sending the image to. Develop some trust first. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's really good advice. Yeah, not just the technology, but also the, the people considering yes. the whole picture. Well, in, in, in all of... <laughs> People are always the weakest link of any security mm -hmm. or technology. <laughs> yep, yep, I can totally relate to that. <laughs> we are. We're, we're social creatures. We are, you know, we are not machines. And, and, and we will throw the practicalities out to get laid. 
I know this. Well, throughout the park, that counties to get out, out to get late. People bet on our bet on our uh, desire to help, to to steal money from us. People will bet on our greed to steal money from us. People will bet on our, you know, desire to get laid to steal money or data or whatever from us. Mm -hmm. You you can't reject humanity and become completely skeptical. Right. But you'd be a little more skeptical. <laughs> and maybe we'll all come out of this just being a little more self-aware around this stuff, which would be great well, because we'll have right. to think and, about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Be aware of how you're interacting with the technology, whatever that technology is. <laughs> yeah, whatever it is that you use. Yeah. Wow. Um, so, such good points there. Thank you so much for sharing this stuff. Um, if um, if anyone who's watching wants to um, follow you or find more about you, are you online? Like, are you uh, do you have a yes? I'm on. Uh, I have I have a Twitter account. I'm on Twitter. I don't remember what my handle is at the moment, but I can tell you. <laughs> Please, and I'll pop that up. That would be awesome. So, um, on Twitter, I am Mister Underscore Steve. 64. <laughs> Fantastic. And then I'm, well, I'm also, I think I'm also Mr. Steve on Recon. And I think I'm also, I'm also, I'm also on LinkedIn and other places. So uh, great. <laughs> people can find me. <laughs> Fantastic. I'll, I'll chuck that link up. And my very, very last question is what is your preferred drink of choice while isolating? Because this is a question that's very dear to my heart. <laughs> it depends, day or evening. So during the day, it's coffee. In the evening, it's often um, uh, scotch or occasionally uh, wine. <laughs> I, the whiskey is, is really working for me at the moment. It's going well. <laughs> yes, it, help, it helps us sleep. It helps, well, it does help. <laughs> and it's hard being inside and being stationary. <laughs> oh my goodness, tell me about it. Well, the whiskey helps with being stationary too. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for chatting. I really of appreciate course. you sharing Thank your you. expertise. And I'm sure um, everyone else is going to find this really helpful too. Thank you. And if you have any other questions or you want to speak, yeah, please let me know. This has been lovely. Oh, it's been great. And don't worry, I'm sure I'm sure we'll get tons. So I'll, I'll be in touch. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. Have a great evening, Steve. You too. Take care. See you later. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you found that as interesting as I did. If there's anything that I just learned, uh, it's that uh, we all need to take our privacy and safety and security fairly seriously. And it's worth just doing a little bit of work to get our heads around it if we're going to start uh, getting into getting sexy online more as this um, as this whole lockdown situation continues. It's definitely a, um, a learning in progress for me. As I learn more and more, I'll keep posting about this. And certainly if you have any experiences or any tips you'd like to share, please feel free to, to uh, let me know. I'd love to hear about it. You can reply wherever this video is posted, or you can send me an email at info at artofthehookup.com. I'll also post links to all the apps we were talking about in the comments below. That's it, guys. Stay safe. Talk soon.